We're going to do something fun today, a little bit more different, a uh, little different. Uh, and I'm asking you, what are you doing for Christmas? And in many ways, this does link to what I've been talking about, the portal of the heart. How do we view Christmas? What does Christmas mean to us? And are there a number of traditions that are around this time of year? And we're going to be looking at some of the older traditions that seem to have been neglected and the meanings behind some of these traditions. So uh, let's have a look here. So our father is unchanging. And we know that the enemy always tries to pervert what the father created. We know that our heavenly father is the only creator. And Satan takes what... Uh, the father has created and he always tries to twist it into something differently. And he tries to draw us away from, from the truth. And uh, we are going to be looking at this Advent season and see what it what is in the portal of the heart, okay? So basically, what does Advent mean to you and all the traditions that go around that? And we're gonna be looking at that. So, what is in the heart as we look at our Advent season? John 10 verses nine and 10 says the following. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever. And I will go in and out freely and find pastures, spiritual security. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. That's a lovely passage of scripture. And obviously what we've got is got these two balances here, God's way and the enemy's way. And whatever the father does, he tries to pervert. So the word advent means the coming of someone important or some important event. And please note both of these things, the someone important and an important event. It comes from the word Adventus, to arrive. And Advent is the first season in the church year. So Advent began two Sundays ago. Uh, or was it a Sunday ago? I can't remember. And it includes the four Sundays prior to Christmas. And obviously, because it's the four Sundays prior to Christmas, it will begin on different days every year. So next year, Advent will begin on Sunday, the 3rd of December. This time, it was somewhere in November, the last Sunday of November. So... Advent anticipates the coming of Christ from three different aspects. So what are the three different aspects? Just think for a moment. What do you think? The coming of something important and somebody important. And here's the three aspects. Well, number one, it is a remembrance of the nativity. Jesus coming, born in a stable, and all that that represents. But it also is a remembrance of receiving of Christ as a believer. People receiving Christ as a believer is an advent that we should be looking at. And then it is waiting for the second coming of Christ. And this is when we come into the season, this advent season, we should be looking at not just the nativity, 
and all the things that the world presents about Christmas. But we should be looking at people receiving Christ as believer. That's an advent and his second coming. Talk a little bit more about that in a moment. In Matthew 16, verse 27, it says the following. For the Son of God is going to come in the glory and majesty of his Father with his angels. And then he will repay each one in accordance with what he has done. So this is talking about the second coming, and this is Jesus speaking. And in Colossians 3, 4, it says something similar. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So we are actually looking, when we look at this Advent season, not only to this nativity scene, people getting saved, but we are also looking for his second coming, which is, in my opinion, very, very soon. Now, there are five traditions that the world has perverted for itself. And we're going to go through each one of them and look at them. Some of them you might not even know. But there were five traditions all talking about this Advent season of things that our forefathers, our church forefathers did in about the remembrance of this time and this Advent season. Well, there is the lighting of the Advent wreath. Now, today we see many wreaths hanging on the door. It has gone different from what the initial intention was. Then there is a chrismon tree. Now, a mon is an icon. You know, we have Pokemon. It's an icon, a single icon. So there's a chrismon tree. And there is a tradition of hanging the greens. And there's the lighting of the Chris Tingle. And then there is gift giving. So we're just going to look at all five of these little things and look at the original meaning that was behind them and what they represented and the depth of the meaning behind these uh, representations. So the lighting of the Advent wreath, right? It symbolizes the passage of the four weeks of Advent. So there's the four Sundays before Christmas. That's the Advent period. It is evergreen. It is an evergreen wreath with four candles around the outside. The wreaths are circular, representing God's infinite love. The evergreen leaves represent the hope of eternal life. There are usually three purple candles and one rose candle, which represent hope, joy, love, and peace. And one candle is lit on the first Sunday, then two on the next, three on the next, and four on the last Advent Sunday. And each Sunday is accompanied with a Bible reading, devotional meditation, and prayer. And in the center is the white Christ candle, which is lit on Christmas Eve. So the wreath should look something like this. And so you can see that it's, it's a very, very symbolic meaning as we look at the wreath, not just something that we hang on the front door or over the fireplace. Let's look at the Chrismon tree. So a mon, a Chrismon is an icon, right? It's a, it's a symbolistic symbolism, right? And this is what the tree looks like. And it has a whole lot of aspects to it, which we are now going to just explore. 
It is an evergreen tree placed in the church at Advent. That's where it usually is placed. The evergreen tree symbolizes the eternal life of Jesus Christ. Is decorated only with clear lights and chrismon made from white and gold materials. And chrismons are ancient symbols for Christ or his ministry. And they may be the dove, the fish, the various types across the Jerusalem cross, etc., the shepherd's crook, the chalice. And then there was decorated all with very specific symbols relating to Jesus Christ. Today, obviously, our trees are littered with colored lights and baubles and tinsels and a whole lot of things that do not carry the symbolism of this Advent season. Then there's the ceremony of hanging the greens. You might know this. Um, I think some people will. But it was, and we'll look at it now, a Western ceremony in which people adjoined the, uh, adorned their church. So they would hang up green stuff, um, branches and uh, in the church. This is done at the start of the Advent on the first Sunday, involves a placement of evergreen vegetation. Notice again, evergreen vegetation, and it carries the symbol of everlasting life. And scripture is read to explain the significance of the holly, the cedar, the advent wreath, and the chrismon tree. So it, it, it has a lot more going for it. It is not just placing a couple of decorations around the church or your home. Now there is the lighting of the Christingle. Now I don't know if you've ever heard of this. But this is what it looks like. And it's also very, very symbolic. And as you look at it, think for yourself, what do you think that all those items represent? Let's have a look. The lighting of the Christingle, a symbolic object used in the Advent. It's from a German word, Christkind, meaning little Christ child. Used to celebrate Jesus Christ as the light of the world. And it featured in Moravian churches. The Moravian church is a very interesting church. If you're interested in church history, the Moravian church is a very, very interesting church to learn about. Now, the Christingle usually consists of the following. An orange, and it is representing the world. A candle pushed into the center of the orange, representing Jesus Christ as the light of the world. A red ribbon full wrapped around the orange representing the blood of Christ. Has a lot more meaning. And that dried fruit skewered on cocktail sticks represents the fruits of the earth and the four seasons. And often they used cloves studded into the orange as a replacement for the dried fruits, making it into a pomander. Very, very interesting when we look at these symbolics, uh, symbolism. Right, gift giving. Now, oh, this is interesting. So obviously we know the Magi and they brought gold, myrrh and frankincense and there's a little uh, picture of that. But let's look a little bit into the background of gift giving. Very interesting. In ancient Rome, gift giving occurred in December 
which was celebrated during the Saturnalia holiday. What is that? An ancient Roman festival and holiday in honor of the god Saturn. Isn't that interesting how the enemy always tries to pervert something? The practice of giving gifts during Christmas tide is symbolic of the presentation of the gifts by the three wise men. And I think most of us know that. Now, here's an interesting thing. Early Christian rulers interpreted this story as indication that their subjects should give gifts to their superiors. For many centuries, gift giving took place on December 6, around St. Nicholas Day. According to the liturgical calendars, the Christmas season lasted 12 days. A gift is given for each of the 12 days of Christmas diet. And we know the song, on the first day of Christmas, my true love said to me, and we can go on for all 12 days. Today, gifts are only given on Christmas day or the 12th night, the first and the last days of the Christmas season. And for many of us, we don't think too much about the 12th night. So that is just a little bit of a interesting research background that might help you to think a little bit differently about this time of season. And so we have two questions. What are you doing for Christmas? And how about this one? What giving, what gift are you giving to Christ? Thank you. Bless you. And enjoy this Advent season in Jesus' name. Amen.